there is a delicious irony in my standing in front of you this afternoon and sp speaking English. I think there's a delicious irony in that. Uh, I speak Faroese fluently. I've been here since 1991. Uh, I said fluently, not accurately. Uh, and I'm self-taught in Faroese. And I'm self-taught in Danish and Norwegian. I can read and understand Danish, and I can read and understand Norwegian. But in a situation like this, I can only speak English. <laughs> And I'm happy to see one of the governmental ministers here because a lot of my presentation this afternoon is directed towards his department and the Department of Education. There is a curious dichotomy in being an immigrant. And my presentation today actually is based upon teaching Faroese to adult immigrants. I came here in 1991 as a 27-year-old. Was I 27? Yes, I was. And I have stayed here two years longer than my life in India. My life as a wife and mother began in the Faroe Islands. I married to a fellow Indian who came here in 83 to build glass fiber boats in marine plast Kalbak. The dichotomy comes from the fact that I feel Faroese, but you see a foreigner standing in front of you, despite the fact that my children are Faroese, born in um, I am, My husband and I are foreigners in our own homes. We have two Faroese boys, even though they look Indian. And they are Faroese from the top of their heads to the tip of their toes. And God forbid, one of them is Chauvel. So, uh, and we have to constantly justify our identity as their parents because we're not good enough. Both the boys told us when they were teenagers that we're not good enough because we are not Faroese. And then the challenge we face outside the house is something else. But... Um, the policy makers and the politicians and governmental ministers give a great deal of importance to the demand they make on adult immigrants who come into the country. The demand is simple and right and fair. You have to learn Faroese. Absolutely. But somehow, the governmental officers, policy makers and ministers are not that convinced because as the gentleman said earlier they do not put money where their mouth is and if they put money it's not an impressive sum and in the long term investing in the language learning of immigrants is good for all of us for ferry society as a whole the reason i'm concentrating on the teaching of ferries to adult immigrants becomes very clear because my presentation is one perspective how we could teach Faroese to adult immigrants in a manner that respects the complete individual. When adult immigrants come to the Faroes, it is not our job to shape them. They come as complete individuals. So their original culture and language demands and must be given respect. Any teaching of Faroese that does not take into account the mother tongues of the various immigrants and their culture is destined to cause irritation and a sense of feeling as outsiders. When I came here in 91 I, and up to 90, no, up to the early 2006, 7, I did not feel like an outsider. But today, ironically, because of the political discourse and the societal discourse, I'm more of an outsider after knowing Faroese than I ever did when I entered the Faroe Islands. And maybe it's time for the politicians to put their heads together and see where it is they're going wrong. To come back to this specific presentation, since I've had the opportunity to make my piece said, and hopefully people will remember, I am going to present what is called CRP, culturally relevant pedagogy 
or interchangeably culturally responsive pedagogy. And I'm going to introduce that concept to you and I follow it up by looking at its aims and then why it is important in the teaching context. Furthermore, what does it mean for teachers to have CRP and why do I think it's a good perspective for adult immigrants to the Faroe Islands? Leading researchers in the field have come up with certain definitions. I intend reading out the first definition fully because it's very, very important. Using cultural knowledge, prior experiences, frames of reference, and performance styles of culturally diverse students to make learning encounters more relevant to and effective for the students. And the second one speaks about how it refers to a teacher's ability to understand student behavior, learning styles within the context of their culture. So the student is not seen as being lazy, disrespectful, or whatever it is that the teacher imagines. So when you use the student's native culture, the adult student's native culture, and you grow to understand this individual, you tune in better into educating them appropriately, which is why culturally relevant or responsive pedagogy is an important perspective for teachers who are going to be teaching Faroese to adult immigrants. So what is the aim of this culturally responsive pedagogy? It is to create a learning environment that enables all learners, regardless of national origin, culture, religion, ethnicity, what have you, to find that the classroom is appropriate and the key word, inclusive. We want inclusive education, we want equity in education. And it's up to the teachers to make sure they make this possible for the adult immigrants. No one can deny that language is a vehicle for learning. But no one says Faroese is the only vehicle for learning. As much as ethnic Faroese celebrate the Faroese language, as they should, as much as ethnic Faroese want to protect Faroese, as they should, Faroese is the property of every individual, however badly or excellently they speak and use the language. It is much mine with all its grammatical errors as it is to the ethnic speaker who probably speaks it perfectly. Ladies and gentlemen, I too own Faroese. So it's extremely important for teachers to understand who they are nationally, culturally, has an impact on the way they teach. And that's the second point I make. Therefore, teachers who teach adult immigrants Faroese have to understand how foreign languages are learned, have to understand what CRP is, and have to understand the difference between teaching children and adults. So what is it that teachers need to be able to practice the CRP? We're looking at a socio-cultural consciousness, an awareness that culture matters, an awareness that culture is a deep part of everybody's identity. It is a crucial factor together with language. And in learning Faroese, what we do not want the immigrants to do is to assimilate into Faroese culture. We want them to integrate. We don't want them to lose the identity. I celebrate my differences. In a month of Sundays, I'm never going to look white. So I will use that and celebrate the differences. I'm proud I have made myself in the Faroe Islands, despite the political lack of help or otherwise. What else do teachers need? They need to appreciate the attitude they show towards students of diverse cultures. Because I think we are more than 60 immigrant nations in the country. I'm not sure I haven't updated my knowledge there. So a teacher teaching Faroese will have several nationalities in front of him or her. And teachers are change agents. 
And why are we change agents in this particular context? Because the Faroese teacher brings his or her culture to the classroom and that synchronizes, hopefully, with the student's culture. And there is a dynamism and a synergy there that creates a change. Perhaps the teacher is responsible for the immigrant feeling, I can be a part of fairy society. So it's a massive responsibility. The teachers who teach the adult immigrants have to be qualified specifically to do so. And teachers have to have a constructive view of education. What does this mean? Knowledge is not created in isolation. Knowledge is created and learning is created, are created in interaction. Interaction between teacher and student, student and student. So we are co-constructors of knowledge. The Faroese teacher teaching adult immigrants does not own knowledge, does not have the patent on knowledge. If the teacher is aware of all this, and on top of it, the, stu the, the teacher understands his or her students and has some kind of an insight into their lives, then the teacher can acquire strategies for CRP. So teachers must use culture as a scaffold for language learning. They must use the student's personal interests and language experience to make the classroom re relevant and alive. And they have to be sure that they allow interaction in the classroom. Knowledge of the Faroese grammatical system is not the knowledge of the Faroese language. It's the knowledge of the grammar of the Faroese system. It's a very clear and clean distinction that research makes. Using language is one thing, knowing the grammatical system is something else. Two things we expect of a CRP teacher. A teacher who knows that his or her culture has an impact on his or her own teaching and that the teacher gives importance to the culture of the students. And for my last slide, why CRP for adult immigrants learning the Faroese language? Because it creates a positive learning environment. A lot of us have children. How many of us have had children come home and say, the classroom is negative? Do you think there's any learning going on there? So we create a positive learning environment. We make efficient use of class time and the teacher as a human resource in interaction with the students as a human resource. This way it encourages students to take responsibility for their learning and become interested in their learning. It creates a safe and secure learning environment and research is very clear. Students have to feel safe and secure in the classroom to learn. So academic success, cultural competence and critical awareness or other advantages, and the quality of the teaching improves, and the students feel a sense of self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is one of the greatest intrinsic motivators in education. It means a person believes that they have the necessary skills to fulfill a task at any given point in time. It helps teachers to understand different learners, promotes understanding, promotes an atmosphere of mutual respect and desire to reach the goals in unison. And finally, in summing it up, I say culturally responsive or relevant pedagogy creates a culture of respect and encourages a sense of belonging. It is in the interest of the Faroe Islands to have its immigrants feel that they belong that is fundamental to well-being of individuals in society. And it helps language learning. We want the immigrants to learn the language and integrate. I have one final word of caution. Language learning is crucial for integration, but unfortunately, it's not enough just to learn the language. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you. Ja, Colby. Yeah, ja, thank. Yeah, I have a small. Should I speak in English? Yes, please. Yes. Thank you. Okay. 
<laughs> Thank you for your, and all of you for your representation and comments. Uh, I'm really interested in this method, what you call it, that you, you spoke of here. It, uh, I don't have the knowledge in this area, but it just sounds like common sense when you present it. Um, what would we, uh, is it practiced, you know, in any of our neighborhood countries in the West modern uh, communities or, or, or that you know of in, in, in our countries that we compare to? Uh, and what does it need? Because uh, if you, over 60 nationalities, you say, uh, it, it uh, sounds like it puts a lot of burden upon the teachers. Uh, so we did more teacher, you, you spoke of more money. If you could, uh, so sorry, you, you hear what I'm doing and try to fish, fish yeah. uh, w w out of you w w what we actually need to, to yeah. implement this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you can say it, but I'm not saying it, so I can do it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it was very interesting to hear what you had to say, actually, both of you. And just if I could add a little bit to what Kolpen Ottersson asked about, um, what would you like us as a politicians to do? What can we do uh, to make people that move to Iceland, Faroe Islands or Greenland, feel better and be part of what we are? Uh, and I also noticed that you said you were even more outsider now than you were when you moved here, and I didn't really understand how that could be. Um, so that would be nice to have answer to that. And maybe also, Christine, if you could uh, elaborate a little bit on that, because I know you have been doing a lot of great projects, and it was very nice to hear, see the introduction, even though I've heard a lot about them, but this was very uh, interesting. So if you could elaborate a little bit on it. Thank you. And now you have a challenge, Kalpana, because you will only get like one minute to answer these two or three questions. Right. A, <laughs> a quick answer uh, to your question. Uh, yes, it is practiced in uh, Nordic countries. I belong to the UArctic network, and we're just in the course of talking of e uh, equity in education, and we'll actually be publishing a book soon on culturally responsive pedagogy. Uh, Research indicates that culturally relevant pedagogy, there are certain methodologies that you can adopt, I can't go into it right now, but it begins with the teacher's attitude and willingness to appreciate that culture can be a barrier in learning. It begins with uh, the teacher's appreciation of his or her own culture and how it colors the way the person teaches. For example, in the Faroe Islands and Denmark and other Scandinavian countries, it's as if there is only one uniform culture and often teachers carry the middle, upper middle class culture of the country they're in. And that is uh, a European culture or Scandinavian culture and that is not enough. Uh, that seems uh, very poverty stricken, uh, if you will. And as for the politicians, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> As for the politicians, I can understand why the disturbance, money, money, and more money. Uh, apart from that, I think to acknowledge in the political discourse, which ties into your second question, why do I feel more of an outsider? Around 2007, 2008, there was election campaigns, which really indicated that immigrants were a nuisance factor rather than a resource. And for someone who's been teaching since 1992 and have hundreds, if not thousands of students who've passed through my hand, hands, to hear that was extremely painful. It's money, it's organization, it's understanding, it's respect, and an acknowledgement of the fact if something is not done now, we create bigger problems and create even more second grade citizens. Looking at me, you would think I'm a successful integration figure. I don't see myself as successfully integrated because I'm still seen as a foreigner. So what, who is a Faroese person? What makes me Faroese? I carry a Danish passport, but does that make me a Dane or a Faroese person? 